Um, grants, Seriously, am I going to control all of your speaker boxes? I'm sorry. Grants um, got that the Holiday Park EOI process has been completed. Then it goes on that the Takapuna Holiday Park is able to occupy the land that it currently occupies. Da da da. To the end. I think we've got to um, acknowledge that there's always been uh, going to be at least a six month, um, ad, you know, before notice is given. It's just I'm a bit concerned that that looks as though they can just stay there right till the very end, whereas there was always a six month notice period. I don't know whether that's just implicit in it or whether it needs. Uh, and I'm also aware that next year we're aware that there's the Masters Games and the Lion and there's no, mm. you know, no intention to disrupt mm. the ability to use that facility. So I, I just wanted to make sure that the, it didn't, um, that it still recognised that there was that six month lead and if, if you know, the, uh, if it's necessary. Uh, my, my comment would be I think that that's already picked up by the fact there is an earlier resolution, but um, yeah. uh, do you see any need to make an amendment? I, I don't mind it being added in, um, because, but it's already there. And, so and I thought it earlier. was picked up by, you know, in the meantime. But but if you're a bit nervous that that means there won't be a six-month notice given, then I'm quite happy to to include. So noting here. earlier undertakings from the board yeah. and Panaku yeah. Development Auckland to give six months notice, a minimum of six months notice in the case of any termination. Okay. Right, so with that in mind, it's been moved and seconded. Um, give, sorry, to give at least six months. Yeah. Oh, a minimum at least, it's the same thing. Um, sorry, yes, you had something to. Well, I was just going to very, I don't, you know, because I know this has been, again, been canvassed to death, but I really do want to thank the members of the community for their tireless work in, um, in pursuing this issue and, again, turning up tonight and putting their views forward. And this, um, this is um, an iconic piece of the North Shore. And we have established this community forum and I'm really hopeful that the, the community will um, come to grips with that and provide some very strong guiding advice to this board because I note in the, um, the consultation that the board did last year, 98% of respondents did not want this proposal that was before us tonight, the, the, the joint proposal. Only 2% of people said they thought that was a good idea. And I, I think we should learn or learn um, from the history of this. And hopefully, when um, after that, the forum reports back to the board, the decisions the board makes in the future will be strongly guided by the wishes of the community at that time, as we should always be. So again, I just want to thank the members of the community for the, the very strong input they've had, the emails that we've all received and letters over um, just recently, but also over a long period of time and the effort that's gone in. People have done a huge amount of work and I thank them for that. Very good. Um, sorry, this, just has this has just reminded me because it's, um, I echo those sentiments for the community, but also very aware of the extensive work that both of the officers have done. And I did say when we moved into debate that I would offer you both the opportunity to not have to sit there um, through, through our discussion of the item. So um, I, uh, the two of you, uh, just you're aware at this stage, if you would like to leave, there shouldn't be any more questions asked um, now that we have moved into the debate. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll leave that over to you if, you if you so choose. So I've got Member Cohen and then I'll come to Member O'Connor. Um, under normal circumstances, if there is such a thing, there's no question that we would have had a, a different outcome in regards to this northern activity zone of Takapuna Beach. And if people hadn't um, clearly given their opinion, not just that they gave a clear um, voice that they wanted 80% um, out of the 7,800 through the poll wanted uh, upgraded campground, but uh, the reasons and things they put forward and the mobilisation that people participated in it. Because you can imagine if we only had 1,000 people responded, the credibility of um, what the community wanted would have been that much less. 
but when you consider that we got 7,800 people responding, gave a clear message to the board, and if you put it in context, out of our area of 58,000, Wellington and their amalgamation run by local government New Zealand, um, no, by the local government um, commission, um, in a population of 350,000 with all the TV, newspapers and all the agro going on, they only managed to get 9,000 people putting in a submission. And so uh, we are really thankful for all those who um, went the extra mile, because too often people feel that they can't influence what happens in local government and give up before they even start. And we were perhaps really fortunate that you just didn't give up, you persisted, and it's over a five or six year period or more. Um, you are to be highly commended, and we're very thankful um, for what you've been able to achieve. So thank you all very much. Member O'Connor. Yeah, I just want to also thank the officers for which must have been the most difficult application you've had to deal with. To deal with 10 pages of, I don't believe there's been anybody in this community that I could count on, probably on two hands, that have not wanted the camping ground. And this has gone on ever since the management plan when we failed to take into notice the 2,500 people that wrote a petition from the camping ground and yet we accepted a 1,000 pro forma, which is only a signature, from Yachting New Zealand. And this has gone on and on and on and if it wasn't for the likes of Jan and Gavin who built up the social media page for Save Takapuna Holiday Camp with 13,200 likes on it. They have rallied the people around. I have been very stressed by all the emails, but I admire what people have written. I have never, ever, ever struck one issue where the community have all joined in. The first thing they say to me when they meet me, what are you doing about the camping run? Why aren't you... And I feel like saying, don't blame me, don't blame me, please. <laughs> um, but I have listened to the public. I've been listening to them from the days we went right back to the management plan. Um, and, and I know that that management plan didn't get around. Even Jan, who lived at that stage, lived in Eversley, lived, you just lived in Enoch Avenue, knew nothing about the management plan, and yet she lived across the road. So few people knew about it, and yet we made the most warped management plan I have ever dealt with. I'm ashamed of it. It means nothing. It's, I, I, I think we should, it's too expensive to redo it, of course, but... It's just the fact that I've never, I feel other issues have been sidelined because we've been dealing with something and we haven't listened to the public. We must listen to the public. And when they rally around like they have and write emails at half past three in the morning and then emails at eight o'clock in the morning, let's listen to what they say. They own the land. Not us, the arrogance, the arrogance of us, the arrogance of power. We think that we know better than the public. So thank you very much. It must have been a very, very difficult report for you to write. And every time I read it, I swear, gosh, I'm glad I haven't got your job. Thank you. <laughs> right. And um, just a brief comment from me, just to once again thank both of you for the work that you've put in and um, just to recognise as well that uh, the, the it, it's been a difficult time for, for both of you and that it's also um, meant that a lot of effort has been put in. Um, I do want to acknowledge that Yachting New Zealand have made this decision themselves and I think that rec recognising that is, is important as well, that, um, that you know, plenty of people can read into it what they so choose, but um, from what we see it's their decision to withdraw and I think um, you know, we'll um, all be interested in seeing what the next steps are because I think there has been a general recognition throughout this process as well from all sides that um, some kind of uh, investment into facilities for our um, developing yachtsmen and women um, and especially I think we'll be very acutely aware of it at the Olympics and the various different programs and projects that are so sad with that whether it be Waterwise or others um, are, are still of massive interest to us um, in, in this harbour city so I think we'll all be interested to see what happens next. Uh, but all the same, um, thank you Maureen, thank you Matt, thank you members and um, yes, to reiterate the earlier point, thank you to the community for their 
ongoing advocacy on this issue as well. So, um, well, no, Member Cohen, I can't come back to you because you've already spoken to. Okay, you can do that in a moment. I'm just going to make sure that there are no other speaking turns that wish to be used. So, with that, um, Mr. Perry, so did you have a point to make? Um, yes, Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, I feel as um, the delegate of the CEO, I have a bit of a, uh, a responsibility to comment on behalf of um, council staff here. Um, granted, Member O'Connor uh, and the chair yourself have, have extended some thanks to the officers in front of us, and I would just like to reiterate that. Um, I know that this has been an extremely difficult issue to work on, uh, but I personally have um, enjoyed working with you both on this issue. Uh, I really admired the, um, the objectivity uh, and the level of thinking that both of you have displayed throughout this process, despite various pressures from a multitude of different sources. And uh, I can honestly say that I don't think Council has two better people to have been managing this issue than the two before, in front of us. And I think the report quality shows that. So from my own position, I want to really thank you. Um, because we couldn't have, have gotten to this point, I guess, without your efforts. And in addition, I'd also like to thank um, and recognize um, what my team has gone through to date. Um, it's been a pretty difficult ride for local board services. Um, and in particular, I'm looking at you, Anne-Marie, and I know you might be embarrassed by me calling you out, but unfortunately, Anne-Marie has borne the brunt of a lot of this, um, and I think unrightfully so. And the, um, the positivity that she's displayed from day one um, and her calm under pressure, I think, is exemplar. And um, I just want to thank you, Anne Marie, in particular, for all of your hard work on this as well. Um, I know that m myself, um, the rest of the team, and the officers over here as well um, couldn't have gotten through all of this without your assistance. So thank you. Mr. Uh, Chair, I want to if read your mind, but I suspect that you're wanting to point out that we should add a, another recommendation to. I think, the thing. with the board's indulgence, then I would like to um, to add another resolution of thanks. Can I just double check that wasn't your resolution? That was my um, one that I was anticipating moving because um, it's in fact. Uh, well, I think it just so happens that you're both mo the mover and seconder, aren't you? Uh, yes, so, so that makes right. it easy to there we go. add that on. Much easier well, but I wouldn't agree. mind speaking to that particular aspect, although Mr. Perry has done a superb job in summing he can so do, much more eloquently than I would have. I think we should keep everyone here later as our thank you to local board services and the officers. But um, yes, I think I think so. Look, just to double check, is, um, you're comfortable with us just to draft up some wording, Deputy Chair? Well, I, I, mean, I mean, I support the comments that are being made that, um, you know, we've, we've all been around this issue for a long time, but the absolute professionalism that's been exhibited, especially by both officers here, is laudable, and, and I think um, quite rightly they should be named, which is not usual mm. um, in the report. But also, um, Mr Perry's been modest, and I know it's been a very um, difficult issue, and Eric's been um, very professional in this as well, and his team, so I'd, I'd like to name um, Mr Perry and, and, her, and the local board services team as well. And again, I know it's unusual, but this has been a very unusual and divisive issue. And uh, with the board split, um, often 3-3, three, three, not always, but often 3-3 three, three on this, then it's fallen to the local board services team to actually walk a, a very tight line. And, and I admire the work that's been done on it. So. Um, I appreciate that. Just in terms of the wording, I think it's worthwhile to add in um, the names because I see that we've said uh, Mr Perry and the Devonport yeah. Tech Local Board Services team, but I think we should add in um, Emery, yeah. um, Christie, and Haley Scoville as well because I think all the work that's been put in there, and Nita, of course, Nita never gets um, recognition, but all the work there. So I think I think that covers it, but Member Cohen, I will give you the opportunity just to add in because it's a. It's yes, uh, being shared around. both Mr Perry and uh, the Deputy Chair have, have covered off most of the things, but in situations like this, it's, it's not only the professionalism, but it's actually having um, confidence and trust in what is being provided. And I suspect, um, Maureen, you were given probably a little bit of a poison chalice if I was thinking of, of things, and it's not the type of task that one would have volunteered to say, this is just what I wanted to handle. But um, it, it makes life so much easier that when we respect what you do, that when we do get the information back, we're not double 
um, looking for things that uh, may or may not be there. And that's probably the uh, respect and everything that you've built up over so many uh, years. And we don't often always have the opportunity to really thank you and appreciate for what um, you actually do do behind the scenes and the wisdom and things you have of getting the parties um, together on all, all sorts of things. And also, uh, Mr Perry, um, all the way through, and I know from when I was chair, um, and I mentioned it when I did finish, um, the high respect that I hold you, um, given the um, probably the complications between us um, local boards and the wider um, council family, and probably expanded out further to um, government as well, and it was always one of the areas um, that I took up at a very early age with the first CEO before Auckland Council was set up and the Minister was whether our staff were going to be able to be independent um, sufficiently to give us the best possible advice and guidance as compared with the interests of the wider Council.